up y'all it's your girl monique nicole and i am back with another video before we get started honey if you're new to my channel please please make sure you are subscribed go ahead and click that subscribe button down below right there while you're at it go ahead and click the thumbs up button to like this video it is an easy and free way to help support my channel honey we are trying to what grow okay y'all got me to 1k and i am very very thankful for the love and support however comma there's still some room for for growth this year okay so let's hit that like button subscribe if you're new share with your friends and family who watch power and just you know help a sister out okay so as y'all saw from my video Oh, I love my black sunglasses in the car. As y'all know, we are in mourning. We are mourning and we are grieving the loss of a very beloved character, Monet Tahada, honey. Freaking Monet. There's so much to be said about Monet. Like, I I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it later, y'all. I'm going to get to it later. Let me not, uh, you know, jump the gun or whatever, because there's a lot to talk about and go over, you know, before we get to all of that, how the episode ended in a very tragic, very tragic way, may I add. So let's, let's just start from the beginning, honey. Let's start from the beginning, Episode nine. Let me also let y'all know I am late. I was supposed to drop this like Wednesday, but I was actually not feeling well yesterday. I had a little bit of a medical scare. I am much better now. Thank God. So I am sorry for the delay, but what better late than never. So let's get into it. Episode nine, Married to the Game. This is Monique Nicole's review and recap. So the episode kind of starts off with everybody doing their thing. We have the Tahadas here. We have my girl. Golden Brooks, uh, who I had the honor and privilege of meeting uh, back in June in LA when I was out there for the BET Award weekend. Um, she is beautiful, beautiful in person and had such a beautiful, kind personality and spirit. We had a lovely conversation about just her career, upcoming projects she had. And she was just very gracious and kind, very patient, took all the photos that was asked of her, answered all the interview questions. She was very, very sweet. So I'm so happy to see her back on our screens playing um, Aunt Janet. So, you know, Aunt Janet is getting the family together. Like, uh-uh, boo-boo kitty, y'all better show up to your son's uh, wedding. Monet, that's your son. And Drew, that's your brother. And Drew was like, look, y'all, I don't want to hear all that kumbaya, blood is thick in the water, BS. We not feeling each other right now, boo-boo kitty. So I don't want to hear it, auntie. You know, Monet's like, mm, whatever. So I think Drew text, um... Diana was like, yo, son, are we going to um, your brother's wedding? And she's like, look, I have a lot of stuff going on, boo-boo kitty. I don't got time to worry about Kane and his arranged marriage. So Diana, we had a day at, at, at school. I keep forgetting these kids are literally college kids. Like they, they, they killing people by day. You know, they, they studying by day and killing people and slinging dope by night. It's really crazy. But so uh, Effie gets good news from Stanford University for, I guess, the engineering program. You know, uh, Effie is very, very smart, obviously. And we know that she has hopes and dreams outside of the drug game. Will that come true for Miss Effie Morales? I don't know. So while Effie is looking forward to her career, Diana... Dirty Diana can't even focus on what's in front of her because she's too worried about all the stuff that she's been going through, which, to her credit, Diana has been going through some pretty traumatic things. I mean, she was pregnant. She lost the baby tragically. She actually could have died. So, yes, she is going through a really difficult time. So, what's going on here? So, we got um, Green Eyes. Uh, Detective Carter, he is setting up the plan that him and Noma created on the previous episode, which was they going to reverse it 
and take out Tariq and the Tahadas because it got back to them that the Tahadas and Tariq were gonna take them out. So baby, we gotta we gotta reverse this shit, baby. It's Uno reverse back to you. So he's trying to set up his part in um, setting up Tariq to come to Staten Island that night to some type of shipment or something or some dudes that he wants Tariq to confront. Tariq was like, listen, I'm Tariq. Like, um, my dude, don't you have like cops for that? Don't you have like professional people to do such things? What you want with me? I'm just a freaking college kid. But y'all know this was all a part of Carter's scheme. So, you know, not that Tariq had much say so. He went ahead and agreed to do uh, Carter's task, if you will. What's next? Um, I'm, I'm skipping certain things. I don't care about Drew freaking out about Tariq and all that. I don't care about that. So, <laughs> on to one of my favorite scenes. Actually, probably my favorite scene of the episode was the dinner scene. So we have Noma's brother, which I forget his name. Y'all know I suck at names, honey. He he came straight from Nigeria, honey. And he's over here like, you really about to get married, sis? Like, huh, you, you getting married so soon after your husband passed away. So he asked, he asked her, like, have the Italians arrested anyone for... Lombardi's murder and she's like oh no not yet but you know we're gonna see what happens yeah um so she's trying to act all you know cool calm collective but you know her, her brother her brother knows something is fishy just something just all of this the, the 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 husband's death and you trying to hurry up and get married and he's like I know you had a thing for the help but baby you taking it to a whole nother level and she's like I have this under control do I do I come for you and your horse do I come for you and your horse he was like well bitch I ain't never married none of them okay so what's good <laughs> he said I ain't never married none of them hoes have I okay so we even all right okay? <laughs> so in the midst of all of that, in walks freaking Monet in her sexy ass white dress. Now, I don't know if the fellas picked up on this. I'm sure a lot of the ladies did. Ladies, y'all know when you're attending a wedding or any type of wedding festivities, you do not wear white. White is indeed reserved for the bride so definitely monet was being an ass and trying to upstage um noma but i just thought it was absolutely hilarious because it was very subtle but of course the women you know most of us women caught on to it but it was funny so kane was like what y'all doing here she was like uh you asked us to come so we here i mean but we can fucking leave nigga you ain't gonna tell me twice i can definitely go home and watch you know tv or something no one's like, oh no, stay, stay, stay. The more the merrier. Everybody come in. Everybody's welcome. So we had dinner, honey. Y'all know power. One thing about power, power is good for a dinner scene, honey. Now, this didn't live up to the infamous Tahada and Zeke dinner table scene, but this was cute, though. This was cute. So the brother kick it off with. You know, I like your home, Kane. You know, this is this is rather nice. You know what I'm saying? And then um, here comes uh, what should we call it? Hold on, because this is where I had to stop. I got messed up with my pictures. Anyway, all right. So he's like, "Yeah, I like your home," and they're having a little banter. So then Drew time uh, chimes in, was like, "Yeah, this is Cap, because this is he don't own this place, boo boo." Actually, matter of fact. We were sharing this place before uh, uh, la, 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 Kane so graciously kicked me out. And then Monet was like, <laughs> matter of fact, boo-boo, I told them Negroes that we're going to sell it eventually. You know what I'm saying? So everybody's like, what the hell going on around here? And so um, what happened? I think this is out of order. Wait, is this out of order? It don't matter. So what had happened next was, I think, oh, yeah, the brother asked Kane, like, hey, 
um, what do you do for work? You know, basic, basic questions when you're getting to know somebody. What do you do for work? I was like, you know, well, you know, I ran the family business for quite some time, but you know, I met Noma and I'm really fond of Noma's company. Baby, that brother almost choked on his food. He said, her company, her company. He said, no, no, no. It is more of a family enterprise. So I'm like, Noma, you ain't shit. Like this whole time she really popping her stuff. Like she is just that girl. Like Noma is just the HBIC up in this thing. And bit really, honey, my love, my love, you actually run a family business. Yeah. Yeah. It ain't your company, boo boo. It's your brother and your father's company. So how I see it is your, your father is the head ninja in charge and you and the brother are down here. Okay. So Miss Noma don't really got it the way she been acting like she got it. So cap on Noma. So um, Monet just is relishing in this moment. She's like, funny because did your sister ever tell you that me and her actually share um a mutual friend by the name of mm, dante spears aka mecca the brother was like oh you <laughs> you knew mecca and she's like yeah we grew up together we really know each other very well and now this heifer's marrying my son and then Drew chimes in and is like, oh, yeah, I think Mecca worked for your family's enterprise, right? Yo, it got so awkward. Dola was like, all right, that's enough. Um, What's the daughter's name? Anya, you, you clear up these plates. um, Brother, why don't you go outside and enjoy the view, yeah? Enjoy the view. Take it all in, yeah? So that happens. And <laughs> Kane was like, Diana, Drew, why don't you help clean up? It was like, nigga, hell no. Then um, Monet was like, help help your brother because he needs it. That scene was so funny. And I really enjoyed watching Monet be like funny, playful. Yeah, she was being an asshole, but it was freaking funny to me. And then Kane was like, look, mom, we got to talk. All right, we got to talk. I got so um, they talking about everything and... He's just like, you know, Noma's, Noma's a good look for me, you know? And she she just kept, this is why, let me tell y'all for real, this is why I thought Kane was going to be the one to go and not Monet, because throughout the last couple episodes, Monet kept asking him, like, are everybody, really, are you sure? Are you sure you want to do this? Effie, Monet, everybody's like, are you sure? Are you sure? So I'm thinking, oh, shit, like something really bad is going to happen to Kane because it's there to me it was like they were setting it up to be like that which I like that they hit hit us with the okie doke but for me that's what I was thinking because even in the scene she's like are you sure son he's like yeah Noma's a good look for me she's gonna make me partner and Monet was like baby she's never gonna see you as an equal my love like that's just not that's not gonna happen like right now you're resourceful to her once she's done with you she gonna she done like you only serving a, a temporary purpose for her and he was like no ma that's how you do people but she's not like that i'm like hey what is oh lord but you know it got a little sentimental and he was like you know i appreciate you being here for real for real and then that led her to be like you know kane um uh oh i don't think i posted it but where she was just like you know kane you know you really you really stood up as for as the man of the house when Lorenzo got locked up and you did not have to do that. You were damn near a kid yourself. And I appreciate, basically I appreciate you for stepping up and taking over the family and just being a head of the household essentially. And, you know, um, he was just like, you know, Ma, you did the best you could, you know, they had a real cute sentimental moment. And Monet told Kane that you're actually a good son. And bitch, I gasped. The cane gas, everybody, the cameraman gas, like everybody was like, what? Monet has a compliment to her children. Monet actually has a sentimental kind moment with her kids. 
I was like, oh my God, this is a full circle moment. Like we're seeing some growth here, um, which also could have been a foreshadowing moment for um, Monet's demise essentially, right? But like I said, y'all, I, I really thought it was Kane this whole time. So they have a cute little moment. Drew and Diana come in and bust up the little moment and Drew and Kane go at it. And she's like, y'all shut the fuck up. Get out of my face. Y'all go have fun. Go to your little bachelorette or bachelorette, bachelor party and turn up and get out of my face. So the kids go to the bachelor party. So Monet with her boots and legs are heading out and they she had a little conversation with um, Noma. She's like, I'm marrying your son for God's sakes. We're going to get along. Yeah, we're going to be family. So, you know, bull skit basically so um Monet was like look I, I don't want none of this I don't want back in the business but I do want my children taken care of and Monet's like well how do you suppose I do that and Monet was like money <laughs> cash money <laughs> okay and so Monet's like well you know I don't really leave a lot of cash laying around yet but I do invest and I do have access to products and I know you know how to move it yeah so um, she lures Monet all the way to Staten Island, baby, um, because she has some goodies there that Monet can basically move said product to get said money. But this was all a scheme. This was a scheme and a plot that Monet and Carter put together. So Monet as going straight to ambush. I'm not sure why Monet trusts um, Noma so much. I don't understand why Monet didn't have no backup, nobody. <sighs> but you know the power writers, they will dumb a character down. They will write something ridiculous to fit the story, to fit the narrative that they're trying to portray. So we're just supposed to go along with it, you guys. All right, so we at the turn up. We at the club. We at the strip club. You know I'm saying? We got a little Dirk making his little cameo. He's supposed to be Kane's cousin or what have you. I was a little confused by the dialogue, so I'm not even going to really touch on it too much. But listen, everybody is turning up. Look at Diana. Look at Dirty Diana throwing them ones on the stripper, baby. That's me in the strip club, baby. Give me the ones. Not my ones. That's why I go with them. When I do go to the strip club, which is not often, maybe once a year, if that, when I go, I like to go in a big group and with a lot of men because the men, y'all going to help me pay because, baby, I ain't paying for parking. I ain't paying for entry. Then you got to pay to get a table. I ain't doing all, and then pay once to throw it. Strip. I'm not doing that, my love. I'm not doing that yet. So give me your money. <laughs> I got my money. I want your money. Give me your money so we can make it rain. So Dirty Diana was making it rain on them hoes, okay? And we have a little cute sentimental moment with the Tahada kids. It was so sweet, y'all. It was so freaking sweet to see them like this. Y'all know I'm a little, you know, I'm a little peacemaker. Like, I really love when everybody's just getting along and being loving towards each other. I really just... <sighs> anyway. All right. So they having fun or whatever. So things calm down. You know how it goes when you're out. And Diana's like, you know, have you talked to Monet yet? Like, I'm sure she's probably going through it as a mother. She's about to lose Kane to Noma. I know she's going through it. So she's like, let me call my, let me call my mother. So she calls Monet and it goes straight to voicemail. Kind of weird. So she calls Aunt Janet. And Aunt Janet was like, yeah, honey, um, no, um, Noma, you know, your brother's new wifey had Monet go to Staten Island for something. And Diana's like, huh, okay, okay. So they, they, they she and Drew are pondering about it, but not too heavy. Then... Effie come in, which I'm sorry, I had to gag when um <laughs> when Diana called Effie Kane's mistress. That was funny. So Effie came in and was like, yo, son, why'd you change a drop on me last minute? And he's like, uh, nothing's changed. And she was like, yeah, Vadine's people said uh, they're going to Staten Island for the drop. So Diana and Drew are like, huh? Come again? You know what I mean? Janet and Noma sent Monet 
No, uh, Janet said, uh, Lord, y'all, I can't read nor, nor speak. Janet said, Noma sent Monet to Staten Island. And Tariq is going to Staten Island. Because remember, Carter's people told Drew earlier that day that, yeah, that he has Kane doing a job for him in Staten Island. So Drew the whole time was thinking that um, Carter was bringing Tariq in to do the work. But, baby, it's a scheme from the pits of hell. So Drew and Diana were like, oh, hell no. Something is suspect. So they dashed to go save their mother. While they're doing that, child, the lamest sex scene I think I have ever seen. And then on top of that, y'all going to use, you thought it was filling you? That nigga a munch. I don't like I Spice. I don't like her. Like, I don't like the girl. Like, I'm not a hater. I just don't really like her. Like, I just feel like she's not talented. I definitely think she's like the definition of an industry plant. Like, she just has no talent to me. All she do is go on stage and shake her fucking ass. And it's lame. I don't like her. So of all the songs y'all could have had played during the sex scene, you, you chose her and that song. But anyway, so we have this sex scene. Very boring. And then we have a very woof, aggressive sex scene, if you will, with Noma and um, Davis. <laughs> um, yeah, Method Man has a nice back. Um, yeah, y'all. So they having sex or what have you? And what's her? What's the girl's name? There's too many fucking names. Effie is like, make this shit make sense, bro. Like, you getting married tomorrow, but you effing me tonight? And he's like, look, boo. What you and I have going on is completely separate than what the Noma thing. The Noma thing is strictly business, my girl. Strictly business. Like, it's a win-win for both me and Noma. So, don't take it personal, boo. You still my main piece. <laughs> Basically. And then uh, he was like, look, have fun. You want to go to Stanford and build robots. I don't crap on your dreams because it don't make sense to me. So don't crap on mine. And then he going to go with this whack-ass monologue about he want to be Bumpy Johnson. He want to be all these huge, you know, black kingpins um, of the damn 80s and stuff. And I'm just like, Effie was like, well, how do they end up, baby? He talking about some immortal. Ah! Foreshadow. Foreshadow? I'm just saying, I'm just saying, was that a foreshadowing moment? Because I feel like it was. Mm, I feel like it was, you guys. Is Kane going to die? <sighs> I would be so sad because I have truly grown to like Kane uh, this season. Actually, I started to like him the tail end of season three. I definitely like him now, and I will be very, very, very sad if Kane dies. I would rather Kane go to jail than die. But I don't know. That might have been a foreshadow. So the, then the scene that really pissed me off with these two and where I'm looking at Effie very confused this girl going to sit here talking about some, yo, I can't do this life no more. I don't want, I don't want to be in this life. You know, he's like, look, I don't want, I don't want this life for you either. I want better for you, but you chose this life, my love. Like it don't work that way, baby. You can't just flick it like a light switch. Like that's not how it works. So I just don't understand what she thought she was doing. Like it's, it's not like FB just works for like the local corner boy, like, stick up kid or whatever on the block like bitch you work with some pretty heavy hitters and a heavy hitter like Noma ain't gonna let you just leave the nest like in two seconds and leave her organization no baby it's blood in blood out damn near I just feel like you was too busy trying to fucking get on her and her crew last season when you, you threw Tariq under the bus and now you want to cry and tell them, oh, I want to I wanna go to California. I want to do engineering. I want out the game, Kane. Can you help me get out the game? No, bitch. No. No. 
This you can't put in your fucking two week notice, bitch. No, that's not how it works, boo boo. I'm not sure where you got this illusion from, but that's not how it works, my love. That's not how it works. So I'm sorry. Like, bitch, pick up and fucking leave, ho. Like, what the fuck? Like, pick up and leave. They won't, they won't know. Like, Noma's not gonna know where the hell you go. Just leave. Go somewhere. I don't this whole depending on Kane to help her get out the game through Noma is dumb. Dumb. But again, this is power. So uh, all right, that's my rant. What's next? Oh, my rant is not over, y'all. My rant is not over. The dumbest scene in the entire episode. Let me take a sip of water. The dumbest. This knucklehead. I know, I know Michael Rainey Jr. When he read this shit, he was like, Y'all really want me to fucking say this shit? Like, y'all really want me to do this? Oh, goofy ass shit. I'm Tariq St. Evan Patrick. I killed my own freaking father, yo. Davis was like, all right, now, you need, you need to breathe, sir. Like, you need to breathe. My thing is, Tariq, ain't nobody scared of you. I killed my own freaking father. I'm Tariq freaking St. Patrick. We don't care. <laughs> we are not scared of you. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Like, yes, you you have took out some people. I'll give you that. You got some bodies under your belt. I will give you that. But you think Noma and Carter are supposed to be scared of you? <laughs> oh, goofy shit. Anyway, y'all. So. What happened? Oh, wait. I think I was out of order. Damn it. That was out of order. I knew something didn't feel right. Y'all, I'm so freaking sorry. I went on a whole tangent and it was out of order. I'm, I feel so dumb. That's what I That's what I get for talking shit. So what had happened was after that sex scene, duh, I should have known. Put two and two together. Duh. What had happened was Monet and Tariq pulled up on Staten Island, honey, and it was a setup. The Russians came out with the blicky, ready to take them out. And who came in clutch? None other than Drew and Diana. They came to save their mommy. And it was amazing. So they're like, what the hell do we do now? Monet's like, look, well, shit. They think we dead. Let's be dead. Okay. So they take the Russians' bodies, put them in the car, put them in Monet's car, which was a nice car. Like, damn, since you blew up your car. Oh. Put the gasoline, did all that, did all that, cut off they think, you know, all that good stuff. And um, chitty, chitty, bang, bang, blow up the car. All right. So I think after that was the rant of I'm Tariq freaking St. Patrick. So we'll move on from that, my love. So then we have the Tejadas again having a very sentimental moment. You know, Monet's like, look, like y'all saved my life. It wasn't for y'all. I would be dead right now. So I can never really pay y'all back for that type of loyalty. As of right now, let's just have a clean slate. I need y'all. I need y'all's help. But at the same time, y'all are grown. I cannot force y'all. Y'all are grown enough to make your own decisions. So y'all in or out. And I think uh, Drew's facial expression, he really perked up because it's like, Monet never gave them an option, right? She always told them what they could and couldn't do. She always gave them orders. And this was probably the first time that for Drew, where he was like, damn, my mom is actually giving me an option. She's actually giving me a say so. Like, you know, that's never happened. So I think that it really clicked for him. Like, oh, she really might be growing she really might be you know turning over a new leaf or what have you so i think that's the main reason why he why he was like okay yeah i'm i'm i got you ma like i'm in so they have this really beautiful <laughs> so sad. they have this really beautiful um sentimental moment <laughs> so next we have the crew half the crew they meet and they're like, look, we 
don't have a lot of time. We really got to get something going as far as a plan and an execution to take out Carter and Noma. So basically this scene is them going back and forth, brainstorming. So the plan is that they're going to let, you know, Kane have his little funky wedding. But I think at the reception or something like that, uh, they're going to create a distraction where um, Diana will go up to him, talk about family drama. Of course, nobody doesn't want to hear that. So, you know, she's going to get Kane out of there before it becomes chitty, chitty, bang, bang. OK, now Tariq's job in which he's going to enlist the help of Brayden and Effie, even though at first he was like, oh, no, I can do it. I can do it. They was like, me, bro, you can't do this by yourself. This shit is not going to work unless you get Brayden and Effie. So I don't really know what the point of Brayden was being there. I don't know. I guess Brayden was going to be the help to, like, not take out, but tase the security people. And then Effie, of course, was going to take down the security cameras so there was no footage of what was happening on in the church. Uh, Tariq was to go in there because, you know, every Saturday or every Sunday, whenever it was, uh, Carter goes there to, you know, do his confessions. For Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. OK, so that was supposed to be the plan. But we know how that went. <laughs> so let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see let's see it's the day of the wedding yeah so we have noma here and um Mc what are these people's names davis is like hey sister there's some paperwork i need you to sign baby girl and she's like um it's my wedding day love what you doing and she's like he's like yeah it's just don't take a second but from my memory she never signed them she just took them to her room right so I feel like this is going to play a key part in episode 10. What y'all think? Let me know. So the second dumbest scene of the episode was, where is it? Did I not take a picture of it? <coughs> well, this the second dumbest scene of the episode. So as Davis leaves Noma or whatever, try to get her to do the paperwork, she hears one of her henchmen saying, oh, Vadim not picking up. I don't understand why Davis McLean volunteered as tribute to go to this man and say, oh, hey, Noma wants me to go get Vadim and you got to come with me and ah uh, yeah and I'm driving you and oh I'm gonna kill I don't under freaking stand why they wrote this in here what was the purpose of this why why it just felt what's the word what's the word I want to use not just dumb. I don't want to just be basic and say dumb. It just felt, it did feel forced. It felt out of place. It felt like a far stretch, if you will. It just didn't make a lot of logical sense to me. I do think this is going to come back on Davis in episode 10. And I almost feel like Davis could be out of here y'all i really do think they're gonna have to take out another person i have two predictions i i have three death predictions three people up for the chopping block obviously noma kane and davis i think those three are possibly gonna be out of here but that's just my prediction so we got the wedding they both look beautiful may i add um, they both look really, really nice. Um, so they are husband and wife with this fake ass, you know, arrangement they have going on. Okay, cutesy, cutesy, cutesy. So we have Tariq. We have dusty ass Tariq. Where's my other pictures? I feel like I had a picture of um Brayden and um Effie. Whatever, it doesn't really matter. So y'all know, like I said, Brayden and Effie are there but Tariq you know got the big job to take out damn whatchamacallit and I'm like 
of all the jobs, we didn't get, there should have been someone else next to Tariq. Carter ain't no basic ass cop to just take out one-on-one. -on -one. Like, where was the backup for Tariq, y'all? Where was the backup? Where were y'all? Where were y'all? So here comes Tariq with his whole fucking monologue, you know, got to do all this talking. You know, you got to do better than that. Hook ass Russians, my guy. Boy. So, um, child, Carter not even studying Tariq. He, he just yapping, yapping, yapping. All it took was two little seconds, and Carter got the upper hand of Tariq. Now he got Tariq handcuffed. So, of course, his bitch ass calls um, Noma and warns her, like, honey, they're alive. Expect company. Okay? So, at this point, Noma's getting ready for the reception. At this point, she knows, right? So she tells her brother, like, yo, there's some shit going on. They done betrayed us. Strap up. All right. When you see Monet Tejada, shoot first, ask questions later. I, right? I. Right. So that's what happened. So, you know, they had a traditional African Nigerian wedding. Oh, the money. Oh, oh, hey. Oh, hey. Love it. If y'all ain't never been to a Nigerian wedding, Y'all missing out because Nigeria, first of all, African, just African events in general, it doesn't have to be just strictly Nigerian, but African events in general are really, really fun, especially the weddings. Like, ah, I've been to a few. I've been actually a part of a wedding, uh, African wedding a couple years ago. So yeah, it's fun. So it was very believable, especially the outfits that were worn by some of the guests and the money throwing. That's very normal with the culture when there's like a big celebration. So yes. So at this moment, Noma's like, hey. Are you with me or are you with Monet? And he like, huh? Where, where, baby, baby, where is it coming from, my love? Where is it coming from? Where is it coming from? You know what I mean? So she's like, look around, yeah? Look around. So then everybody getting hemmed up. The cousins getting hemmed up. The Tahadas are getting him does. Like, he like, what the fuck going on? This bitch. He was just popping bottles, having fun. So then they take him to the side, child. So it's just a whole mess. Meanwhile, you know, Effie and um Brayden are trying to, you know, save Tariq. So Effie's dumb ass was about to not do shit. Brayden was like, girl, he could kill Tariq. What are you talking about? So thank God Brayden had a little bit of smarts in him. So he did this, it crashed, well, it was dangerous, because it could have went, it could have went left, I, you know what I mean, like, let me, let me take that back a little bit, it could have went left, so I get why Effie was like, um, you know, WTF, but it could have went left, <laughs> but everybody survived, okay, um, Carter was pretty banged up, Tariq was banged up a little bit, okay, um, so at this point, um, when they finally wake up from their injuries, he like, baby, if I don't come back, my team going to be looking for me. They're going to have the whole New York City looking for me, my dog. So what you about to do, Tariq? What are you about to do? So at this point, I don't know what Tariq is about to do with this whole Carter situation. He done got Effie involved. He done got Brayden involved. It's a hot ass mess. So that's to be continued. So back at the wedding, Monet pulls up to save her babies and literally save them because Noma had her crew whisk uh, Drew and Diana to the car and they were gonna get, I don't know what was gonna happen. It wasn't gonna be good, but Monet came and shot the club up and saved her babies. And she was like, y'all get out of here. They were like, no, mom, we're not gonna leave you. We're not gonna leave you. Oh, I'm already getting emotional. So she was like, all right, if y'all get into any shit, get out of here. Do not wait for me. Oh. They didn't know that that was going to be the last time that they saw their mom. <laughs> really freaking sad. <sighs> okay, so what's next? What's my freaking pictures, man? They're not all here. <sighs> Some of them didn't get uploaded. But anyway, you know... 
they have Kane tied up and he, you know Noma's doing her whole monologue about oh you didn't pick me you you, you chose Monet love so you know it's going to be consequences yeah da, 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 da. and he was like bitch I ain't choosing you of my mama nah he was like yo like I'm never turning against my mom like growing up as a black kid in these streets is hard and you know people ninjas be out here hurting kids and taking advantage of them da 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 now, there was a bit of back and forth with this scene, okay, guys? So, and he said, when I couldn't protect myself, she protected me, da 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 When I first watched it and I heard the dialogue, I felt like Kane was admitting to possibly being SA'd as a child. Now, I felt that way for me. Then the next day or two, I went on other power forums and there were some people that agreed with me and there were some people who disagreed with me. Then me, Moochie and the crew did um, a recap on Monday and I spoke up and I said that and no one on the panel agreed with me. So I said, look, they left it up for interpretation but there were several people in the comments who said, yeah, Mo, like I thought, I felt like he was alluding to being essayed. It, to me, it's not far-fetched. It's just some of the verbiage, ninjas be out here hurting kids. And when I couldn't protect myself, like I don't, hurting kids, that's not a, if you're talking about like a, you know, growing up as a black man in a neighborhood and getting bullied and picked on and beat up, I don't think you use the verbiage of hurting kids. When you think of someone hurting kids, you think of physical, you know what? So that's how I took it. I'm going to stand on it. Obviously, I'm not in the writer's room. I don't have concrete evidence, but I'm going to go with my gut and what I felt. You guys let me know in the comment section what you thought. Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'd love to hear. So y'all, for the climax, for the climax, you know, Mary hears this and she busts up in there. She shoots a couple of bullets here, here. But then at this point, she saw that her son was in a very vulnerable position where he was tied up and he heard, she heard Noma saying, shoot him. And at this point, I'm about to cry. At this point, she, Mo, uh, Monet knew that she was going to have to sacrifice and protect her son. Um, it still could have went left, honestly, because, you know, it could have went left either way. But she went out in the blaze of glory and went out like a gangster and protect her baby. I know I had a picture of Kane. What happened to my pictures? Y'all, I'm so irritated. Urgh. Urgh. Let me see. Because we have to get into the acting, you guys. Woody McLean did such a... Oh, God, wait. I feel the emotions. Ugh. God, he was like, don't go, wait. I'm like literally about to cry. Like I was so, oh my God. Uh, Y'all know I'm such a little baby. I'm so, I talk so much shit. I am such a baby at heart and I'm such a cry baby. I really cry. I cried all three times that I watched the episode. I watched the episode three times. I cried every single time. I'm not saying boo-hoo, but I definitely shed a couple tears. Like it was so freaking emotional. Like, I didn't even think I would be this sad at Monet being taken out, but I actually was like, I actually was freaking sad. Like I'm really sad that she's gone. Um, and then again, like how traumatizing watching your mom die in front of you and you can't do anything about it. You're literally tied uh, with your hands tied behind your back. You cannot even save your mom. You can't comfort her. Nothing. And he's like, don't go. Wait. Wait. Oh, my God. And then Monet's like, my babies. My babies. Lord Jesus. My babies. 
<sighs> and then Drew and Diana come like, Ma, Ma, don't go, Ma, please. <sighs> oh, y'all, I think I'm about to cry. I'm about to fucking cry. It was so fucking sad. R.I.P. R.I.P. Monet Tahada. But like, honestly, can we just take a moment to give Mary J. Blige her freaking flowers? Like, let me just tell y'all, the ones, like my friends that know me in real life, everybody knows I'm a Beehive member, duh. But another woman that I go hard for is Mary J. Blige. Like, I have loved that woman basically my entire life. Like, my entire life. Like, her albums, her music. Oh, my God. Her story. I think I'm about to cry. Her Mary's story, just like, it's not even just about where she came from. It's like when she talked about, I didn't even, I wasn't even planning on talking about this. When she talks about, like, her struggles in life and struggling with like depression and you know other things i can't the s word and like just feeling like not feeling beautiful not feeling worthy not feeling like she deserved to be loved or not just almost hating her like just to know that she came from that place and struggled with that for so many years to the point where she wanted to end her life and to see that she was able to turn it around and just um to continue to be a light in this world and share her music and her talents and her gifts with people like with, with, from the music to the acting and oh my god I know you know the first season or two she got pushed back but I, honestly I never had a problem with her acting I mean this isn't theater this isn't Broadway like this is a power spinoff like Let's keep it a buck. Um, I, I I always thought Mary was great for the role of Monet. I, like, I didn't even, like, I knew it was Mary, but she really had me believe in, like, no, bitch, I'm Monet. I'm Monet, Monet Tahada. And I really love her. I just, I'm so proud of how far she's come in her career. And I'm so proud of her and happy for her that she is now a legendary character in the power universe. No one can ever take that away from her. Like people dream of a role like this. You know what I'm saying? Like she's forever going to be Mary J. Blige, but she's also going to forever be freaking Monet Tahada from the power universe. Like she's now a part of the power universe. And I just think that is so amazing. And I'm just I'm really going to miss seeing her as Monet Sahada. Like, this makes me want to just go back from the, the first season and rewatch it all over again, which I think I'm going to do. Um, I am sad to see the show end. I'm sad to see the characters gone. And I'm just so, wow. I just, I didn't even think I was going to get emotional about Monet, Monet Sahada because Monet Sahada, there was moments where I loved her. There was moments where I hated her. She was definitely a polarizing a uh, character and yeah you guys like i'm sad i'm freaking sad so rest in peace rest in peace monet tahada like oh my gosh anyway y'all i didn't talk for 50 minutes now what the video wasn't even supposed to be that damn long but y'all know i be i'm talking y'all know i'm a talker you know I'm a talker. So, like, y'all can't judge me, bro. Y'all cannot judge me. All right. Again, y'all, I'm sorry for the delay. I was supposed to drop this low-key two days ago. Yeah, definitely yesterday, but I was sick. So, here we are. Please run up the numbers. Please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please do all the things. I think me and some of the ladies will be up tonight at midnight doing a watch party. And then we're going to go live at 1 o'clock in the morning so it's gonna be a late night for me um hopefully i can stay up and not snore like i did last time all right y'all thank y'all so much for watching this uh video please again like subscribe all the things and i will catch y'all next time bye